Hey, how's it going there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at out here on this Thursday. It's about 1029 a.m. California time. September 5th, 2024 is the date here. Latest activity on the globe shows a 1.4. Also, a little bit of larger movement there into the Nevada area this morning. Got a 3.1 coming in within the last hour as well in a cluster of earthquakes once again this area is just rocking and rolling with earthquake activity here recently uh, see what we got overnight uh well we're coming up on 70 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours but uh that's just adding on to the multitude of quakes here over the last week or so uh far as overnight <coughs> excuse me overnight activity a couple ones there's that 3.1 in the last hour a couple other smaller quakes in there as well now I do have, uh, looks like they made a little adjustment here on the seismograph station. I'll have to check that. But uh, the Grapevine Ranger Station is located out here somewhere in the proximity of these earthquakes. So that should be showing up in terms of the, uh, the reading from these quakes coming in. But yeah, things still stirring up out here across this area south of Tonopah. Uh, I can only imagine what our total tally looks like now in the last week or so in this area uh, approaching 200 earthquakes just in the last seven days for this area so uh, and it's all across it looks like a little linear fashion here across the goldfield hills area of nevada numerous fault systems obviously out all throughout nevada and um, of course that's a good sign here of stress out against the plate boundary itself the san andreas fault uh, down here in southern california as far as overnight activity goes, uh, let's see if we got anything above 2.5. Nothing above 2.5 here for Southern California. Uh, the latest one shows 2.3 down across the southern area of the state. Also some movement up here around Bakersfield again. And uh, just kind of keeping an eye on it. Things have been quite active out here across the southern portion of the state and inland here uh, into western Nevada. So definitely uh, be on guard. Uh, Bay Area, a handful of smaller quakes out here against the San Jacinto or the uh, San Andreas Fault here, the creeping segment leading off to the Calaveras Fault Zone, which extends up here towards Concord. A couple of smaller quakes uh, this morning. Northern California, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on up here. It's a little odd. Most of the movement here recently has been roughly about the uh, creeping segment eastward and then southward. Uh, you pretty much draw a circle around this area seems to be getting more intense lately uh, Pacific Northwest pretty quiet inland areas uh, let's check out Yellowstone here real quick see if we got anything major going on up there I don't think so there is a uh, there's an earthquake out there on that map see this one right here that did show up across many other seismograph stations here. I'm kind of wondering where that's at, though. Let's see here. Nothing showing up here on, on the um, earthquake map. These are all very small earthquakes, and that would not show up on all of them. A little 0.6 would not. So it looks like maybe somewhere up in... Well, let's see. Let me look see what we had for the last uh, largest event. There was that 6.2 from yesterday. 5.7 at 0338 down in Bolivia. Okay, so yeah, that's, um, believe it or not, that's the reading down there in Bolivia showing up on the seismograph stations out here across Yellowstone. Yeah, thousands of miles away, right? But uh, these large earthquakes, when they approach six pointer and above, they can show up. And this one showed up quite nicely there, and it matches the time frame. This is going to be mountain time, 0, 04, uh, 30 or so. And that earthquake down south was uh, 0338. So that would make sense. California time, mountain time for uh, Yellowstone. Yeah, goodness. That uh, earthquake fairly deep as well into the Bolivia area for a 5.7, 138 miles deep here into the Peru Chile Trench. The area has been quite active recently. If we look at the last seven days of earthquake activity here, uh, and I'm sure there's more than this. This is just what the USGS is showing. Uh, seen a bunch of fours and uh, more recently fives seems to be on the increase out here. If I remember right, this area did see a six-pointer out here somewhere. 
Let me see here. Well, at least I thought they did. Wasn't there a six-pointer out here recently? Did they remove it? Yeah, a little odd. I thought there was a... Maybe it's been over a month, though. I don't know. No, it seems like it's been within the last couple weeks here. So, anyway, uh, magnitude's increasing in terms of the strength of these quakes. We'll continue to keep an eye here on this region for some larger movement. Puerto Rico area, a handful of quakes out there as well. Let's go over here to the latest. Looks like the 3.9 just outside the Cruise Bay. U.S. Virgin Islands area, right against the Puerto Rico Trench here, showing a 3.9, 40, 44 miles deep here into that subduction zone region. Look at the uh, bigger picture out here. There's our 6.2 from yesterday around the Papua New Guinea area. Looks like we've got a little adjustment back here across the Kermadec Trench in New Zealand area, showing uh, a couple of threes and some fours out here. Five-pointer in the Kermadec Trench as well. Definitely made some uh, major adjustment down here, <coughs> excuse me, across this segment of the uh, plate boundary. Let's run over here and check out the GeoNet servers here real quick. Let's see what's going on. Uh, an hour ago, 2.6, 2.5, 4.2. This is fairly recent, even though it shows yesterday. This is going to be there yesterday. Uh, should technically still be our time. Light earthquake uh, in between South and North Island out there. It looks like north of Wellington was felt uh, mainly across North Island area. 351 reports. Let's see here as we get down south. There's that four-pointer showing up pretty nicely. Uh, pretty nicely. About 10 hours ago, it looks like. So technically still our time, our day. Uh, they are in the future, so to speak, in time frame, a time zone. Uh, aside from that, mainly smaller microquake activity, it looks like, across North Island. Not a whole lot else there on the South Island side. But um, either way, definitely some adjustment going on following that six-pointer. Uh, you got to remember when one area of the plate moves, it can definitely have some adverse action ahead of it in terms of the plate stress, but also behind it here as well. And it looks like things have stirred up quite nicely there in that region overnight. Uh, the Atlantic Ocean, way north here of Greenland and Iceland, the 4.0 showing up. We've been getting a lot of earthquake activity north here recently. Not so much down south. Typical activity across the Mediterranean for now. Some newer movement out into the rift boundaries here of the Indian Ocean, 4.5. Notice those, uh, well, nothing showing up here on the USGS map, but there is a 4.5 out here in one of these ridge zones, these fracture zones. Notice that, un that zipper type pattern that's the uh, uh, divergent boundary zones here indicating some new seafloor being created over time. Yeah, nothing, nothing showing up on the USGS side, so that's from the EMSC. South Africa area seen a 3.0 earlier today as well. Um, far as Iceland activity goes, let's go see what's going on up there across the uh, area. Pull up the earthquake map here first. Uh, just general earthquake activity across various rift zones here that Iceland is situated over. Uh, the area across Grindavik here, Savartsingi area, fairly quiet in terms of uh, earthquake activity. But uh, as far as I know, the eruption is still ongoing here let's take a look here there's one of the giant cones here that's a lot bigger than it looks here in terms of perspective um, not seeing anything splashing out yet hard to tell we go back over here to a different view um, yeah really none of those show anything of uh, noteworthy this is going to be the Catla Volcano area, which uh, is quiet for now. But uh, let's go ahead and check out the Icelandic Med Office here, see what we have. And uh, we'll go from there. This update was put out today, in fact, September 5th. Evidence that land rise has started again in Tavartsingi. 
reduce the power of the eruption somewhat. Okay, this is translated from Iceland, Icelandic to English here, so a little hard to read, but it's doable, right? So obviously when we get stoppage or at least we get the uh, haltage, so to speak, of the eruption at the surface levels, things begin to increase below, and that's, uh, that's what they're stating right here. Um, activity of the volcano continues to decrease in the last few days, but still two uh, seem to be active. Two of the uh, lava vents out here. But the lava bed north of the crater continues to expand at a slow rate to the north. And there's our most recent eruption here, accumulating northern end of this uh, fissure event. But uh, yeah, it looks like we're starting to rise up here a little bit. Let me bring up a little bit different view. That's this red line right here is the indicative of our most recent uh, inflation event following this eruption. Let's go over here to the eight hour run times and we'll check this out a little bit closer. <clears throat> and it will be, it looks like right about here, we'll use the Grindvik one. Here's our most recent eruption, right? This is vertical displacement. The eruption happened. Huge drop in the uh, land, right? Due to the uh, outflow of lava. Outflow of magma from the deeper, from the areas just below the subsurface. So we dropped that quite a bit, but now it looks like we're starting to go up here, as they mentioned. A little bit of a blockage or halting of the eruption at the surface and inflation beginning once again, it looks like. And this has been just an ongoing rinse and repeat scenario uh, across this area of Iceland for a while now. So that should continue. I don't see anything of abnormal activity. Uh, Hawaii out here across the Kilauea volcano looks a little bit lighter here today. Not a whole lot going on. A couple smaller earthquakes across the upper East Rift zone. But overall, nothing, uh, nothing of significant, uh, significant change there. We can pull up the most recent uh, data here to see what we got in terms of deformation data across Kilauea volcano. Just a little bit, a little bit of up and down pattern here, but overall stationary compared to months past, as we had seen inflation taking place here. There's a deflationary event that's a magma intrusion off from the summit uh, to the upper East Rift Zone. Since then, we've gone up, but it seems like things have just kind of uh, come out stationary in the last week or so maybe a little bit of a decline there in terms of the inflation but still something to watch as uh things can change there in a the blink of an eye all right space weather activity see what we got here uh, there was another far side eruption this is uh, the second one here in the last couple days with a massive cme had that been earth directed the last couple ones uh, we'd be looking at maybe another similar event to what we had seen back in May with all the auroras down to extremely low latitudes here. Um, but yeah, this was a, a super large, fast-moving CME on the other side of the sun, the far side of the sun here. So uh, obviously there's a couple different active regions here, and we can see them on the map right here. 3792 is uh, more than likely the culprit here. Maybe 730, uh, 3796 as well. That's the far side. Here's the earth-facing side of the, the uh, sun That's that our visible sunspots are on. Uh, but yeah, these massive eruptions are occurring far side from uh, a number of these sunspots. So we'll see what happens as they come back around here in a week or so. Yeah, see if they're still active. Right now, our flare threat level is about 20% chance here on the earth-facing side. 70% for M-flare, C-flare at 99% chance. And there's not a whole lot here in the last couple days here. We do have numerous sunspots that are currently facing us. And, um, you know, a couple of them are fairly complex here. Got this area, but it's just sitting there looking pretty. Not a whole lot of uh, happenings going on from that sunspot. And down here, this region looks like it's starting to degrade a little bit and stabilize. So uh, I'm really not expecting too much here from this area. There's a little bit of intermixing of the polarities here with this sunspot. We'll keep an eye on that individual area. Uh, and really not a whole lot behind that for now until we get our active regions that are currently thrown off CMEs left and right on the far side. We'll see those crest over here on the eastern limb of the sun 
in uh, about a week. All right, Storm Prediction Center here. Anything major going on? Severe weather, right? Severe weather wise? No. A little bit of marginal risk down here across New Mexico, but no tornado threat. A little bit of wind and maybe a little bit of hail in there as well, but that's about it. Other than that, just general thunderstorm activity out here for the Thursday. Going to be another hot day out here in Northern California. Uh, we're expecting uh, about 107 degrees here today again. Uh, I'm, I'm I think you guys have heard me say it a lot, but I am done with this completely. Let me bring up the, uh, hold on a second. Uh, the pressure differences out here. We got a massive high pressure out here. It looks like it's centered over western, uh, uh, northern Washington, western areas up here of Canada. <clears throat> A lot of colder air dipping down into the Great Lakes area and the eastern portion of the country as we head towards the weekend. We're going to get a little bit cooler pattern out here across California, but whoop de doo it's just a little bit. Not any deep low pressure trough, but uh, maybe a return to normal conditions, which is on the low 90s side. Uh, after that, uh, maybe another cool down. Uh, I don't see any major pattern changes for us here in California uh, or for the rest of the states for that matter. Quick glance at the uh, tropics here, Look at looking down south into the Gulf of Mexico. Got uh, some unorganized thunderstorm activity out there, but uh, hurricane activity. Looks like something's going to form here south into Mexico. Travel up the western coast there of Mexico and then just kind of dissipate and get involved in a bunch of clustering of storms there later. Uh, but I'm really not seeing anything major going on. Got to watch that. The model's been hinting at a little bit of tropical development around the uh, 21st of September in the Gulf of Mexico and also just off the coast here of the eastern portion of the country. So, uh, again, that's a ways out, though. That's on the 21st of September. Don't take these models seriously because they can change from here to tonight. Uh, these may disappear by tonight, but we'll continue to watch that, check back on it. Uh, because if models are hinting at something and they stay consistent, then that's when we need to start uh, you know, taking a, uh, a better look at what could be forming out here down the road. But for now, these two hurricanes, uh, nothing of any noteworthy accuracy when it comes to predictions uh, and forecasts here for uh, tropical development. Uh, another earthquake down south here along the Imperial Fault, the latest one to 1.4. Just keep an eye here on California, folks. Nevada is still rocking and rolling out here for sure. And I believe it's got something to do with the highly stressed area of the plate boundary out here across California. Uh, we'll check back in a little bit later, folks. Have a good day. Stay safe out there and enjoy your Thursday.